It's been a while, guys. I was in Asia for like a month. I didn't realize I was so jet lagged, man. The time difference there is like 11 hours. So, <laughs> so you imagine like in the morning is night over there. It took me two weeks to acclimate back. Yeah, KZR, we nailed it, but shit, man, covered way too early as usual. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, why don't we start? Uh, seems like the markets are pretty... I mean, for us, we, it's the same old process, guys. We Every day, to me, in my opinion, is the same. It's boring. <laughs> Being consistently profitable is boring. Sometimes you want to do stupid shit. You know, it's just exciting. But, you know, when I was younger, I wanted to be in the action all the time. It feels great to get yourself out of the hole. But nowadays, man, when you're old, you just want, you just want peace, quiet, easy trades, no fighting. You just straightforward day and, you know, right, guys? And that's, that's the goal. So if you find yourself, like, oh, all excited every day because you're fighting a stock and, you know, and then you make it a win. Just like, you know, if, you, if, if it feels like the casino, if it feels like you're the adrenaline rush from a casino, it means you're trading wrong, guys. Uh, it means that you are, you know, very anxious about the trade. It means that, you know, the trades are risky because if it's not a risky trade, it's pretty boring, right? If, if you know Mayweather is going to win a fight and he wins the freaking fight, he's the most, he's the most boring fighter because he always wins. There is no drama. He's all defense. He doesn't get hit at all. It's just damn boring. And we want him to brawl. We want him to deviate from his process. But he doesn't. Mayweather does not deviate from his process. But he wins. So you have to ask yourself, you know, do you want to be like the Floyd Mayweather of day trading? Or do you want to be like, you know, like Mike Tyson? Like Mike Tyson was on top of the world, you know, making all these trades. It's just like Mike Tyson is like a lot of these guys that are, he's the best of all time. I really think so. But um, the problem, he had a lot of mental issues and started biting people's ears and they had drug abuse and all that stuff. So, but it's exciting. All his fights are exciting. You know, <laughs> he knocked people out, but it's like, so, yeah, that's a wrong example, but because Mike Tyson is one of the best of all time, but um, I'm just trying to say, you know, making money is boring. To be honest, it's fucking boring, man. And because, you know, you, if you do the same thing over and over, you just get fucking bored. Just like going to your day job. You imagine go to your day job. You're making money every single day of your day job. That's why you're bored. Imagine if your day job consisted of commissions as well. Where if you sold a product or you perform well every day, you get some sort of money. It becomes exciting, right, guys? And so you have to be careful with trading where it doesn't become it, where it doesn't become too boring because then you start to deviate. So you have to find ways to make it interesting. So you always have to to learn every day. That's why having a trading accountability buddy, a tab, a, a, a community like my investing club is so important. If, if I didn't have my investing club as a community, dude, I'd be so bored making all these stupid ass trades. And or just go to your day job. We always advocate: do not, do not, do not quit your day job, guys. Supplement your income. You know, this is you don't need to tra being a full time day trader doesn't mean trading all the time. You know, you you trade a couple hours and you go. Um, all right, so let's talk about what's going on today. So let's start with the watch list, man. I want to show you something that's really cool. Uh, this becomes a broken record because it gets really, really freaking boring. So I'm going to sneak peek into the MIC. Can you see this? So the, first, the, the main stock is the, that we want to talk about during the today's IG Live is KZR, guys. So read what the pre-market analysis that we had. So I'm going to read out loud. It's a scaling plan. Eleven fifty, two bucks. Okay. The reason we like this stock. So let's take a look at this guy. So this is it has an ATM, which is a at the market dilution, right? At the market offering. So let me see KZR. So we, you type in the search. So I caught in a lot of stuff on KZR, guys. So let me see. Mm -hmm. So early in the day, I posted the daily chart, and I said, dude, there's a huge gap fill at 12 bucks. And that's where KZR kind of topped out, right? $12, guys, around there, almost 11.50 to 12. So we were dead on that stock. But more importantly, this is why we liked KZR to be in with. I mean, I posted that, let me see. Where is it? I posted the ATM information 
Um, today is June the 28th. So we've been on this stock for like all day long, guys. Sorry, hold on. Uh, I don't want to give away too much edge, but I'll show you. Yeah. So early on, you know, there, there's a $200 million ATM offering, guys. And so that's, that was our basis. So how do you find that information? There's a couple ways to know. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to give you the, let me see. You go into the filings and then you go see an ATM or some sort of, let me see, BAM SEC is in the one place. But let me show you this one. Okay. So this is why I posted it. Uh, let me see. Shit. I'm so sorry, guys. I thought we'd be right here. I can't find myself. Uh, there we go. KZR. So we do most of the work for you um, at MIC, guys. I mean, Alex wakes up super early. I wake up early, too, for West Coast time. And so there's an ATM right there. They're selling a shit ton Notice there's $200 million worth of sell, and there's $128 million left. But more importantly, guys, this is what I'm looking at. Take a look at last updated. Pretty recent. So they are tapping to the ATM, and that's the key. With an ATM at the market offering, they, they don't need to sell. They don't need to sell. That's the thing people don't understand. People, if, if you're just looking at all these plays, a lot of these do have an ATM, but it doesn't mean they have to sell. That's how they trap you, right? That's how, these, that's how the market makers, the funds, the algos trap you because they're like, oh my God, they must sell 200 million. No way they're gonna sell that, right? And so what they do is just because they have the filing there doesn't mean they have to, okay? So you put it together the pieces, right? So one piece is the chart, okay? Technical analysis is one edge. And we saw a gap fill of $12 line, right guys? And so let me show you my chart on that. So I was scaling up since the pre-market. Okay, so all the way up here, I'm, I'm, I'm shorting it already. So that's because I'm using one of the edges that we have, which is technical analysis. So there's a 12 gap fill at 12 bucks. And so that's why I was not afraid to go there. Okay, I knew where the overhead resistance is. So I just want me to explain very quickly, give a little information on what what these gap fills are. So it, it, it's a, take a look at that. We have videos and all this stuff. Basically, it gapped down for some bad news. And so there's a lot of overhead supply, overhead resistance. So if, if I was in at 12 bucks, I just want to break even. So it, so it's, a, it's sort of like a magnet for some, uh, for some strange reason in, in, in technical analysis, it fills the gap and go down because you know, there's so much overhead resistance right there, so much supply. And so that's one edge you have. And second edge is filing. You always look at the filings to see if there's dilution, but it doesn't mean they have to use it. But one trick, one trick, this is my trick, but like I told you, so I'm not gonna talk about this much. Who will ever say, last updated. Some of these last updated ones means it's like, if they, if they never use it, then it's like, okay. So when you look at that, you have to see what's left, guys. You have to see what's left and when was the last time they tapped into it just to see if they will tap into it. Because if a, I see so many stocks that they'd never tap into their ATM. You know, so when I see that, I go, okay, maybe they're, they blew it out yesterday. So you take a, you paint the whole picture, right guys? So yesterday, look at this. Yesterday, they came on the news and then they blew it out. They, they sold tons of that. So one, so I always take a look at my, my trades and because I'm trying to learn to be a better trader every single day, guys. So my mistake was Alex did a great job. He added, he added at the 1080 line on the 1080 break. Okay. What I, so this morning he added. So I thought they would try to at least squeeze it back to VWAP where I can add a bunch more. So I didn't, so I did not have the size I wanted. Boohoo me, of course, you know, I made money, but boohoo, I should have made more money. So when you go back to your trading, did you, the only thing you could do is, did you follow your plan? I followed my plan. The problem is my plan didn't come, did not come to fruition. I thought that they would trap a little bit more so that they could squeeze back to 12 and then they would do an all day fader type of play down, right? And sell the ATM. They didn't do that. They just gave up right away. They just started selling, selling, selling. So I'm like, holy shit. So there are plays where they do trap you 
And I really thought they would trap because the reason why is it's easy to borrow. You could, so I mean, I'm like, oh shit, if it's easy to borrow, uh, I don't want to get stuck. I don't want to be overcrowded. It seemed too obvious. This play to me was too obvious. So what I did was I, I kind of overthought, right? I'm like, shit, thinking like, they're going to trap me and all that shit. So I was like saving a lot of bullets. And so in hindsight, I mean, the, the only thing I could do in the future is like, I can't blame myself because I followed my plan. It's just my plan did not work. I mean, it, it, the market did not do what I wanted to put, um, what my plan did, right? I wanted to bounce. I wanted to squeeze. I wanted them to trap, but did not trap. So what can you do, right? You, uh, the only thing you do is learn from your mistake. This is, so when I say mistakes, every trade has a mistake. My mistake was I was trying to be too exacting. I mean, dude, I knew the end result is this thing's gonna get sold all the way fucking down. But I wanted to be exact. I wanted to get, I, I was being too cute with it, guys. Trying to, you know, and sometimes in trading, guys, when you're trying to be exacting, when you're trying to save for nickels, you lose on dollars, right? So that's what I did. I tried to be, because these markets are very trappy. The last thing, and, and I'm reading stuff, I didn't want people to get trapped, because this is also a phase two, and I've been, I've been burnt a lot on phase twos. Um, and I've been waiting for the squeeze. It didn't happen. It did not happen. So the mistake I had was I was overthinking the stock. I was overthinking, thinking it's going to trap. But the thing is, the worst case in this scenario is I, I lost potential. I didn't make as much as I wanted to make, but I didn't lose. And so that's a good takeaway, right? So every trade you do, guys, you always have to t have a takeaway. Uh, what did you do uh, right? And what could you do better the next time? So this is a huge edge, guys. When you see all these these indicators line up, filings, dilution, ATM, um, and a big ass blowout news, and this thing was at six dollars yesterday. I mean, oh my god, dude, six bucks. They 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 run it all the way up to twelve bucks, and, and you know, so this these are the landscape. And you know what, man? It just seemed too easy today. I mean, <laughs> I'm like. Is it, could it be that easy? Is just gonna walk, let me walk down, not get trapped? So I was saving my size for, for when they did trap. So that's, that's the one thing. I mean, so, so what I, what you need to know is, you know what, man? You can, you can account and play defense. And in my opinion, I, I would do defense all day long. So if, if you didn't, the thing is, or you set the stop. If you set the stop that you can size up, but I, I really thought, I never saw a scenario where they just walked down like this, guys. I thought at least they would trap a little bit and, and spike up. But this thing, this thing has not freaking bounced at all. And we're looking at this stock like, oh my God, left so much money on the table from the 12 line. Now it's like $9, man. Crazy, right? Uh, any questions, guys? I mean, we find out this very quickly. There's a process. Part of the process for MIC includes, you know, looking up the technicals, charts, uh, looking at the filings. You always have to look at the filings, guys. So, I mean, dude, this is something I never, as a new trader back in the day, I never even thought about this. How do you know, right? I don't know an ATM. It's the only ATM I'm going to the, the machine to get money so that I can have more $1 bills, right? <laughs> when I go to the clubs, right? But, um... So these are the things that you have to expand your playbook as you learn along. You know, having good technical analysis on charts is one thing, but knowing the, the having a, a longer term, big picture, that's what they call the big picture shit, right? Big picture play uh, in terms of like painting the picture, filings is where the big picture play is. But the problem with the big picture play is this, guys. If you're overly convicted, you get blown out. So the, the, that was my fear. My fear is like, dude, this is too fucking obvious. Everyone sees this shit. I don't want to be an overcrowded trade, but you know, this time, but next time, who knows? Maybe this was okay this time because I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, how can you identify, right? Um, which plays will go up and down. So let's take a look at KZR again. Let me see the float. This is a huge float, man, but not that huge, 46 million. This is what kind of feared me, guys, to be honest. The high institutional own percentage. And that's why I was waiting for the squeeze, which never happened. <laughs> Has not happened yet. So, And once again, guys, trading is very difficult to be perfect. You don't need to be perfect as long as you execute your plan. I executed my plan. My plan did not, it did not come to fruition. That's the only thing. Uh, any questions, guys? I want to keep this short and sweet. Uh, we had a bunch of other great plays, too. And so what happens is when the main, when the main play dies, 
so that so there's there's a sector play going on uh, during the Roe versus Wade, the abortion stuff. So you have a lot of stocks that are running, such as EVFM. Look at this, guys. E EVFM come from sixty cents and below to hit to a dollar fifty. Uh, A Fib A Fib. I mean, this sucker came from sixty cents too and hit one hundred twenty dollar twenty five. So, so when you see a lot of sub penny stocks running, be on the lookout for other pump and dumpers, right? So they they've been pumping a lot of these uh, under dollar stocks to dollar plays. Uh, here's my EVFM. So all I did was use the lines from the pre market. Oh, shit, I covered some more blindly during this. <laughs> um, I'm telling you guys, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it, keep it simple, stupid. Um, but, you know, this is the edge that you guys, um, I mean, simple to know, man. Uh, to be honest, guys, look for a couple of things. Look for ATMs. Look for registrations that they can sell. Things like that. Uh, the ATMs are the most powerful thing. And I'm going to leave you with this, man. Take a look at when they last used the ATM, right, guys? So, shh, that's the secret. <laughs> Any other questions? Keep it simple, guys. Uh, Monday is July 4th, so uh, have a good July 4th. Anything else, Alex, I miss? Check out the Twitter, guys. Uh, I posted charts on Twitter. I think we're good, huh, Alex? <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been here. I miss you guys, so <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, guys.